In this video, you're gonna see the three best clients I've ever had, and we're gonna crown one of them as the best ever. But more importantly, you are gonna learn how to be the best dog trainer you can possibly be. This channel is about difficult dogs and difficult situations and aggression. That's what it's about. That's why people watch this channel. And all three of these clients have very difficult dogs in their own way. And all three of these clients have a different set of skills that you can learn from to create the perfect dog trainer or the perfect dog owner. But the thing that all these guys have in common is they have a relationship with their dog and not a relationship in the way a lot of trainers say it. That word is thrown out there all the time, relationship, relationship, relationship. You're gonna see the relationship. You're gonna see the respect from the dog to the owner. Not just this friendship, but a relationship based on respect from the dog to the owner. So in a minute, you're gonna see the first candidate. This is a difficult pit that wanted to attack Prince. You're gonna see it right there, then you're gonna see the guy in action. So. The guy you're going to see is a Cirque de Soleil performer, and I end up offering this guy a job. So this, this guy's talents are that he's very skilled and he's very focused. Think what you need to be a Cirque de Soleil performer, okay? You need to be both of those things, and he is. Watch him work with his dog and look at the relationship. That's going to be a theme throughout, okay? Not relationship based on your best friends with your dog and your dog loves you, but a relationship based on there is a hierarchy. Again, these are difficult dogs. This is not this nice, wonderful golden retriever. There needs to be that respect there. So watch this guy. He knows what he's going to do. The dog is looking at him in a way and following him as opposed to the other way around. This guy has learned this method from somebody. It wasn't me. He learned this method and he came to me. Look at me. Look at him. I'm like, this is good. This guy's doing great. He got his dog as close to Prince as I got his dog in this session. And like I said, you're going to hear me offer this guy a job in a minute, but you're going to see him at work. He, yes, he's strong. A couple of these guys are very strong, but strength, it's not about strength. Okay. You're going to see him right here. He's doing again, the backup method and no nonsense. None of these guys or me, you're not putting up with nonsense. You have an aggressive dog. You have a dominant dog, it's enough with the treats. It's enough with the, I want to be my dog's best friend. Okay. You don't want your dog to attack dogs, attack people. That's the goal. Not to be your dog's best friend. He's backing his dog up close to Prince, standing in front of him, doing this cool, unique method that I like. I don't love it, but it works for this guy and it works for this dog. Proof's in the pudding. It doesn't matter a method has to work. And look at now he knows what he's going to do next. Walks into him, gets the sit. And then he goes to pet Prince. Doesn't even look at Prince, I don't think. Looking at his dog the whole time. Focus. Remember, one of his skills was focus. He's skilled and he's focused. That's what you need to take from this gentleman. Okay. Now you're going to hear me offer. Look at, look at this. Look at that dog. Look at him. You want a job? Come here, front. Front. Come here. I offer this guy a job because he is the man. This guy's going to be successful in anything he does at life. And the proof's in the pudding. Look at his dog. Look at him while he's meeting Prince. The second contender is an NFL player. That doesn't matter. Yes, he's big. Yes, he's strong. His dog is also big and strong. So you're going to hear him be no nonsense. That's what I want, to, want you to get from this guy. His attitude. His attitude is everything. This guy has it right when you're dealing with a big dominant dog. Kong, come. Come here. Grab him. Bring him back. Come here. Good job. Come here. Tell him sit. sit. And down. Oh, down. And tell him, okay, we're not holding grudge. All that shy away when he goes to get Kong is exactly what you want from a dog like Kong. He's not hurting Kong. He has an unbelievable relationship with Kong. But Kong understands who the boss is. You want to have a 130-pound borble and not have that borble know who the boss is? Now he's giving him love. This guy is the boss. This is what you can learn from him, how to be the boss, what to do when your 130-pound borble doesn't listen to you. We can't be messed around. This is dangerous stuff. 
And this is the guy for a dog like this. And you can be like this with your own dominant dog. Sees me coming, is he? Yeah. I don't want him to like fear me, but he knows who the boss is. He should. Fear. And he's like, oh. And then after he anchors down, it's so hard to like get him to do anything. Cause he's like, damn, I'm in trouble. I know I've said it to you. I just don't have a lot of clients that are as good as you. You're the boss that solves so many problems in life. Um, and that's why you have a good dog, to be honest with you. I don't want him to fear me, but he needs to know who the boss is. That's exactly right. Everyone with big, strong dogs needs to walk that line exactly like this guy's walking it. Connery just grouted him. Then he jumped up on the fence, not even aggressively. He's like another big dog grouted me. Maybe I'm not super happy about that. The guy said, Kong, and he walked away. This guy's doing it right. And this dog's going to meet other dogs. He met Prince. He just has the right attitude. Yes, he plays in the NFL. But yes, he's big and strong. His dog also could play in the NFL. And his dog is also big and strong. So you can handle your smaller dog if this guy can handle this dog. Now you're going to see the third contender. What you're going to learn from this guy is timing, when to intervene, how much to intervene. So here his dog is. This is Prince going to mount him. This is so you can see the problem, how big the problem is. This dog was adopted two months before he brought me this dog. And the work that he had done already in just two months with a very difficult dog was very impressive. So you're going to start to see him without me telling him start to do things with his dog. And you're not going to see it perfect. The dog doesn't become perfect. This is 10 minutes into the session, but that's what I want you to see. When to intervene, how much to intervene, and the timing of it. With a very difficult dog, you guys, a dog like a lot of your dogs, and a lot of people just don't know where to go and what to do with this dog. So he stops him right there from barking. Then he realizes, oh, my stop didn't work. Okay, I'm going to go further. So then he does so this is how much to intervene. He, the dog still isn't stopping barking. He doesn't want it to happen. So he corrects him. He, the dog leaves him a little too fast. So he corrects him and he's still not done with it. Now, just like the other guy, look at me looking. Whenever my clients are doing something special, I sit there and I watch. Look at this. So he flipped the dog on the side. Dog, you would think he could let him up right now, but he says, no, I don't feel like letting him up. He doesn't seem calm to me. Oh, now I'm going to put, he's going farther than maybe he has to with the corrections, if you want to even call it this, because he knows how big the prob of a problem he has. You have to go a little farther than you think you need to go. Now you might say this is nothing special, but you're going to see the dog for the first time walk away from the fence. So, and then you're going to see this guy's timing in a minute when he does another one of these. So how far to go? Go farther than you think you need to go. Put the dog on the side if it's out of his mind. So for the first time in a long time, this dog walks away from the other dogs. He gets results. That's what matters. All right. Now you're going to see this dog be too much for another dog. And here he comes. Now I want you to watch something he does here that's subtle. Watch left hand right there. In his peripheral, he saw the other dog just moving in and he blocked him very quickly. And just like the others, you can see the respect from the dog to the owner. Now you're going to hear me live give this guy props. You guys are exceptional for having this dog for three weeks a month. Yeah. Perfect. And for this dog to respond the way he does to your corrections. And then for you to also know when to correct him but mainly the response to the corrections and the way your corrections worked on a very difficult dog is exceptional. So who wins the first annual Beckman's Best Client in History Award? This gentleman does. I would have used their names, but I don't think you would have been able to track who they are. So we're just going to call this guy the normal guy. What does he win? He wins nothing. He wins accolades on a YouTube channel. He was the best because of his timing, because of his results, because he rescued the dog two months before that, when to intervene and how much to intervene. And I hope you learned something from all of these guys because they all had different things to offer. The NFL player had the attitude down. The Cirque de Soleil performer had the skill and the focus down. And then what we call the normal guy, he had the timing when and how to intervene down. And so he is the winner.